Hello everyone. Today we're going to be playing a game called Nothing Special. It's a short disturbing game about being held captive by a mysterious girl. And I don't know about you, but that sounds like my kind of game. With that said, let's jump right into it. Cold. It's cold. It's so cold. How long can my body go on? It's freezing. I'm drenched. The ties are cutting into my skin. The pain doesn't get better with time. It's the same relentless throbbing. What was that noise? It's footsteps. Very familiar footsteps. The sound of leather boots sinking into the mud. Seems like she's back. I can't tell if I'm relieved or terrified. But what does it matter? All I can focus on is the pain. You're awake, right? Every time I come over, you're sleeping. I'm surprised you managed to sleep so much. Seems pretty uncomfortable down there. But I guess you have nothing better to do. Hmm. There's nothing I could do to make her release me. I already tried. I've tried everything. I won't make the mistake of engaging with her again. What's with that smell? It's awful. Don't tell me you. Oh no. Was it really that urgent? You really couldn't wait for me to come back? I know it's been a while, but... You didn't do this on purpose, right? To attract search dogs or something? Okay. No, no. You wouldn't do that. A blinding light hits me. It's coming from behind her. A flashlight, maybe? Does she have someone else with her? There's no way there is another one like her. Now, we'll have to clean you up. It's getting real difficult to take care of you. I never signed up to be a babysitter. You make it very hard for me. Ah, well. Let's remove the gag. You know the drill. Oh. I take a deep breath as she rips that thing off my jaw. The air is nice, isn't it? Cold shoulder, hmm. I'd say that's better than crying. We're making progress. Okay. Today we will skip the usual chores. I have a big surprise for you. I admit, I let you stay here longer than I planned, but life's busy, you know? As an adult, I have a lot of responsibilities. I just can't sit at home and draw all day. Hmm. It's hard out there for us normal people. Luckily, my living conditions changed. So guess what? You can come home with me. It will be dry and warm. And not only that, my attention will be fully on you all day. At least for a while. Isn't that great? I'm sure you're thrilled to get away from here. And with her, sure. Why not? Her house? Is that really better than the forest? It's easier finding people in the forest, isn't it? I can't say I hate the idea, though. I'm going to die if I stay here any longer. By the way, do you feel any pain anywhere? She's got to be kidding me. Don't let her get you angry again. Just answer normally. Everything hurts. I can't feel my feet. Oh, that's not good. It must have been pretty cold. Let's see if they warm up when we're inside. I can get you some painkillers as well. Painkillers aren't going to remove these zip ties. Good point. Don't worry, you'll be fine. Just hold out a little longer. It must only be mild frostbite. So it will heal by itself. Oh my god. Is she talking about my feet? I guess she only hears what she wants. Yeah, clearly. Slay, Gaslight Queen. Go you. You were lucky. Think about it. At least you haven't been eaten by an animal. Haha, <laughs> just kidding. I don't think they eat humans alive. Yeah, they sure do. Hmm, except rats maybe? I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to put these on for safety reasons. She waves a blindfold in front of my face before putting it on. Tightly. I know last time has been difficult with traveling and I apologize for the bruises. But I got some help this time, so everything should go smoothly. It is what it is, but we're being held captive by 
some random woman. So, you know, it could be worse. So it really is another person. Caught by two psychopaths. How the hell am I going to survive this? We'll see each other in my room. Play nice, all right? There's no use in resisting. Just like resisting like in this video. She grabs me by the collar of my jacket and drags me through the mud. It's painful. We stop and I hear a car door opening. Another person's footsteps are coming towards me. Both of them pick me up to shove me into the back seats. They close the doors and start driving. The drive is long and they sit in silence, not saying a single word. I try sleeping, but it's impossible with the anxiety. After what feels like many hours, the car stops for good. Seems like we arrived. The door opens and they carry me out. They're more careful in doing so this time. I hear a door opening and I can feel them carry me up some stairs, followed by dropping me on the ground like a garbage bag. So much about being gentle. Maybe they just had to stay quiet outside. Does this mean there are people around here? That would increase my possibility of survival. Faintly, I can hear her whispering thanks to the other person before she comes in and shuts the door. She removes my blindfold. Ah. The red walls give me the illusion of being in hell for a split second. Turns out we're just in a normal looking room. Not what I expected from a kidnapper. A basement would have been more fitting. My attention goes back to her. Hello again. Welcome to my room. Ah, all alone. In my room. I'm glad. Looks nice, doesn't it? I cleaned everything for you. Oh, well that's nice of her. Maybe I should have done that after you came. Your smell is going to linger, but oh well. I'm not going to do it twice. Take it all in. No rush. I'll bring you some food. And after that, let's get you cleaned and warm. Don't try anything funny while I'm gone. Seriously. Oh god. She leaves and shuts the door behind her. This is bad. Nobody will find me here. I'm tied up, but even if I wasn't, could I run or walk? My feet are in pretty bad condition. Can I do anything at all? I might as well look around. Oh. Oh, cool. An ordinary PC. An empty shelf. It's pretty big. Hmm. Did she used to have a lot of books? It must be really early in the morning. But what day, I wonder. The days in the forest have been blending together. It's my art. Printed out. Oh god. I feel a shiver go down my spine. That must mean she knows me from online. I have no idea. I can look around more, but there doesn't seem to be anything more interesting. I've seen enough. She knows me from online. Looks like this is some sort of stalker. This is bad. I assumed it was a ransom situation. I guess it makes more sense. I haven't had any contact with my family in so long. They have a bit of money, but not that much. And who knows if they'd even waste it to save me. That's a little bleak. Why me then? I think she likes you. You're clearly someone that's well known online. And she's taken a liking to you. So you're in a tough spot. Is it because I'm an artist? I've never heard of that happening. And there are so many artists better than me. Also, how the hell did she find me? I really have to get out of here. Who knows what she's capable of? Ah, I'm back. I wanted to get you your favorite food for today, but things got in between, especially money. The fridge is as empty as it can be, so I just got you some oatmeal for now. I love oatmeal. You must be so hungry. I'll feed you, as usual. Thank you. Let's get that off. She removed the gag. What would happen if I screamed? The risk is too high. Time for your meal. I don't have a spoon this time. I forgot it out there. Oh, come on. Go get a spoon. <laughs> She doesn't have silverware here? I don't believe that. Yeah, I think she just wants to feed you with her hands. I hope that's alright. My hands are clean. Mm. And you're dirty anyways. So it doesn't matter if I make... <laughs> so it doesn't matter if we make a mess. Okay. Well, it matters a little bit since I had to clean you up so much. Yeah, but I think you're enjoying that part a little bit. Let's, let's be honest. So let's be careful. I hate cleaning. I know it's weird to eat out of my hand. But well, you're not grossed out by me, right? What is she planning? Well, if you have no objections, say ah. 
Ah, uh, okay. I can see where multiple endings might come in play here. So I'm going to eat because she seems a little persistent. Eat. I have no choice but to go along. Reluctantly, I open my mouth. Ah, uh, good thing. Here you go. Don't bite down on my finger, all right? I won't forgive you. Hmm. Bite down on her fingers. What does that mean? Her fingers enter my mouth together with the oatmeal. She's using four fingers to shove it in. Oh, God. Why is she putting her hand in my mouth? <laughs> I think there's a little bit of some, some play here. She wipes the food on my tongue, but keeps her fingers inside. I'm completely taken aback by the strange pose we're in. Did you know that over 6 billion bacteria live in there? Your mouth, I mean. Mine too, of course. She starts feeling up the inside of my mouth, going over my tongue and teeth. Oh, my lord. It doesn't seem like she's searching for something specific. It feels like she's moving the food around. I don't get it. Is she drugging me? Is this something perverted? Yeah, perverted, for sure. It's a bit disgusting. I don't mind, though. Someone has to take care of you, after all. Is she trying to get a reaction out of me? I can't read her expression. She slides her fingers off my palate as she finally takes them out of my mouth. The food is smeared all over my gums and tongue. I don't know what kind of oatmeal this is, but something about the texture is odd. Here, have another scoop. You're hungry, right? Wait, what is that? There is... There's something moving in my mouth. Oh, God. Let's just keep going along with it for now. I must have imagined it. Uh, they just had to make her cute, huh? There it is again. The tingling. What's wrong? You don't like it? I can feel it clearly. Something is crawling on my tongue. Oh god, it's probably maggots. What is she feeding me? I told you I have nothing else right now. There's definitely something moving. Picky eater, huh? Just be normal, please. Come on. You're already holding me captive here. I take a closer look at the bowl. <gasps> It is. Those are maggots. I'm eating live maggots. They're crawling all around my tongue. They're different sizes. I can feel their slimy bodies curl and wiggle around. I have to gag. Are you gagging? Is it that bad? I have to get them out now. Don't you dare puke in my room. I won't let you. Oh god. Her hands are covering my mouth forcefully. The maggot soup is dripping off my face. She's squishing the insects against my skin. I can feel the wiggling inside and outside my mouth now. You're going to swallow that. I I have no choice. I just want them to stop moving. I start chewing on them. Yeah, I mean, kind of have to. No matter how hard I chew, I can't kill all of them. Many are too small. Oh God. No, I can't swallow them alive. I feel them go down my throat. Come on, swallow right now. Or I'll make you eat it through your nostrils. Ugh. <laughs> Come on, be normal. I have to do it, damn it. I can feel them go down in a bulk. Swallowing has never felt so agonizingly long. I'm unusually aware of how the food moves down my throat, waiting for the bugs to land in my stomach. At least they're... They're dead. Okay, okay. They are down. I can still feel some movement in my mouth. Didn't I get it all? Or is it just my nerves? I swallow again. And again. She loosens her grip and finally lets go of my mouth. Thanks. It wasn't that hard, was it? Sorry for threatening you. I was just joking. I'd have been really annoyed about cleaning it up, though. Do you want more? I don't think so. No, not again. No way, she's not. I I'm full. Yeah, it's probably a lot of protein. I see. That's all right. Despite difficulties, you were nice today, so I'm happy. You see, good people who listen don't get into trouble. Maybe you can eat more later. It's over, for now. She's really dominating, oh my lord. My mouth is completely empty, but I still feel the tingling everywhere, like ants crawling inside my gums. Hopefully my nerves will calm down soon. Let's get you into the bathroom. That smell is kind of unbearable. She drags me by the armpits into the bathroom. It's not as clean as my room, but it should be good enough. The water got cold. 
I'll put some more hot water in. Small room for two people, but we have to deal with it. The window is imported up, like in the room. The sun seems to be rising. It's hard to believe that there are ordinary people walking outside this building. Walking by a kidnapper's house without any idea of what's going on inside. It happens every day. Maybe I've walked past some places like this myself. You probably have. I read very hot water is bad for frostbite. Should be enough then. Time to get you out of those smelly wet clothes. Getting new clothes doesn't sound bad, but I don't know if I want her to see me undressed. It's going to be a bit difficult. My eyes widen as I see her take out her knife. What is she going to do with that? Uh-oh. Don't worry. I'm not going to use it on you. I'll try to cut them up and pull them out under the zip ties. Why does she want me tied up so badly? She could just threaten me with her weapon. I need a bath, but should I really let her do this? Hmm. You look very nervous about this. Are you ashamed of me seeing you? I can understand that. You know what? You were good today. So we can scrap that. We'll just bathe you in your clothes. Oh god. I have no idea how we're going to dry you, but whatever makes you more comfortable. I'm taking off these shoes, though. Into the bathtub you go. Ha. Ah, it feels very hot. Finally, we can get rid of that stench. Aren't you happy to be in a warm tub? While you soak in there, let's see about your feet. They look pretty bad. All pale and gray. You said they're numb, right? Uh-oh. She's not going to stick her knife in them, right? That, that would be insane. Yes. It must be very painful. We talked about this already. I should have come earlier. I wanted to, but I couldn't. Maybe warming them up works fine. I'm sorry. I do mean it this time. I know it must have been horrible and painful and very lonely. And you must have been scared. And are still scared. Oh god. She is gaslighting. She is manipulative. Oh my lord. But it's working. You must be terrified of me. I treated you so poorly. It's okay. I know I was unbelievably rude. It's just, I'm stressed. Really stressed. I'm not used to this responsibility. I'm usually not like this. I can be really kind. I'm sorry you had to see the worst of me. I never wanted it to turn out like this. It's crazy hearing that in this situation, I know. You're right to think that. I would do the same. But since you already think that of me, allow me to be honest. I care more about you than you think. I honestly want you to be happy. I believe you're unbelievably smart. It must have been so hard since most people are idiotic. Knowing that nobody will ever truly understand you, it's awful. Hmm. Let me guess, you understand me? Is she trying to flatter me? She is. And I'm not saying this to imply we're the same. We're not. I can never understand. I can only speculate. You're better than me. You're amazing. Why does she talk like she knows me? Hmm. She's parasocial. If you give me a chance, I can prove it to you. Let's start over, alright? I can be better. I will be better. You don't have to be scared anymore. And in return, I kindly ask you to be better as well. To be calm and hear me out. And not to inconvenience us both. What do you think? Do you want to try being friends? Yeah, what choice do I have? Okay. Great. And as a sign of my trust, I will do you another favor. She pulls out the knife and moves it closer to my skin. Uh-oh. I panic, but realize she's just trying to cut the zip ties. Maybe I should have brought scissors. Hold still for a moment. Here you go. The zip ties have been removed, and I can move freely. I only now realize how painful my limbs were. Moving them is almost impossible. I'm unsure if I should be relieved or not. Her behavior doesn't make sense. I hope that shows you that I don't want to hurt you. I trust you with not betraying me. You can finish up showering yourself. Please do take off those dirty clothes though. I have new ones right here and I won't look. Let me know if you need help. She backs off and leans on the wall, pulling out her phone to look at it. It doesn't make me more comfortable, but it's best to get clean for my sake. I take off my clothes while sitting in the bathtub and finish up with the shower.
All done? Yes. Here are the clothes. They might be a bit too big for you. They aren't mine. Not hers. Can you put it on in the bathtub? Or should I help you out? I'll do it myself. Of course. Hmm. <laughs> Cute. Also, you shouldn't try to stand on your feet. That's a bad idea with frostbite. I'll try not to. Okay, okay. I managed to put on the clothes. Are you done dressing up? I put on my pants hastily and try to get out of the bathtub. What are you doing? Hold on, I'll help you. She comes over and helps me sit down on the edge of the bathtub. Just ask me for help next time. Hmm. You barely talk to me. Hmm. Remember how much you talked when we first met? You want to shut up? Begging and screaming. Call me every name in the book. <laughs> oh, wait. Sorry. I shouldn't joke about this. I understand why you're not in the mood to talk. You're probably exhausted. It's not like I missed the insults. It's just... I just like to hear you talk more. It makes me sad to see the energy leave your eyes. And I like your voice. I'm tired. I understand. You can go to bed a little later. I want to spend some time with you first. Hmm. I'll carry you to my room since you can't walk it and all. You should know by now. I'm actually pretty strong. Hold on tight or I might drop you. You have enough injuries already. Putting her arms around my torso, she picks me up with ease. Even though I'm not very light at all, she's carrying me like it's nothing. This is getting strange. Back to my room. I'll drop you on the bed. She lets me down on the bed, notably gentle this time, and goes to sit down in her gaming chair. I hope you're comfortable. How do you like my room? It's... it's alright. Thanks. I'm sure my choice of decoration didn't fly over your head. You should be proud. I love everything you do. It's amazing. You really are something else. Your work has helped me so much. I can't begin to describe it. <laughs> How? I only draw anime girls. I was at the bottom when I discovered it. You saved me. You really did. Oh my lord. But you must hear that a lot. And it must be so annoying. Anyone could just say that. I might sound like just another fan, but trust me, I'm not. She truly isn't just another fan. Yeah, she seems to know you more than you know yourself. You must think I'm completely crazy. Hmm. I should keep my admiration down. I know it makes me look pathetic. How could you like someone this pathetic? But it's hard to control myself. I must try my best. Hmm. I really relate to your characters. They're an extension of you, right? Artists always put a lot of themselves into their characters. I know that much. Only a really complicated person can fit so much personality in so many characters. At least I think so. Or maybe it's really easy to write them. It makes fictional characters seem kind of shallow. But that's not important. You make them seem deep. And they're fragments of you, so... I'm interested in you. People say you should separate the author from the work, but... How is that possible? It's all you. It says so much about you. You can't hide anything from others. And I confirmed it. I know everything you ever posted online. And it fits. It aligns with your character's way of thinking and personalities. Say what you will. They're all you. You look like you don't believe me. Tell me. Don't you lose love for media when you find out the author was an awful human being? Don't you look down on someone's art? When you find out, they also have a weird fetish account. Hmm. Don't you think about the singer's life when they sing about their burdens? It's impossible to completely separate the work from their creator. You must accept that. Well, yes and no. I think you should separate the work from the artist. If it relates to you, connect it to you. And try not to think too much about the artist, unless they're just a, you know, a complete piece of, you know. By creating things... You put pieces of yourself out in the world, and I found them. The moment you made your first post, 
That was the moment you exposed yourself. But you know all that. Because you feared it. As you should. It's a bad idea to expose yourself to so many people. But then again. If you hadn't. We'd have never met. In the end. I'm glad things turned out the way they did. I can't say I agree. The doubts I had. They were overwhelming. We all have doubts sometimes. Right? I almost changed my mind about you. It must have been the stress. I almost... Things could have gone so wrong. Oh, do you want to know what my fair character of yours is? It should be pretty easy to guess. I'll show you. Hmm. Oh god, I think I know what's happening. This one. It's obvious why, isn't it? We're identical. It looks like you're my stalker or something. Oh my god. Also, charge your phone. There's nothing that stands out from this design. When I saw that, I was shocked. Technically, you should be amazed about meeting me. I made me feel really connected to you. As if it's fate, you know? I knew I had to know more about you. I can't believe this is what got her interested in me. That's when I messaged you for the commission. I talked to her before? No way. You only drew her twice, and never gave her a name. We'll have to change that. Since she's pretty much me, you should name her after me as well. My name's Olivia. You can address me like that if you'd like. I don't know what to say or think. You're very in your head. I can imagine what you're thinking. I'm sure you're curious why you're here, and what my goals are. And maybe you hate me a lot. She stands up from the chair and sits down beside me. I look at the ground. How can she be so confident I won't attack her? She doesn't even seem to be carrying the gun she had in the forest. I guess she is relying on her strength and the knife in her pocket. Despite what you might think, I'm really not some kind of evil villain planning to kill you. If I'm being honest, I don't even have a plan. I really don't. I'm someone who follows my own instinct, what my heart tells me. This is embarrassing, but I think you're in the right place here with me. Do you know what I, I mean with this? I, I put stupid thoughts in my head and I was bad to you. It was a mistake. We all have those inner struggles, right? They won't win anymore. I won't let the bad thoughts take me over. I think when things calm down and we settle into a stable environment, you will really like me. Listen, I... I really like you. Oh, she's blushing. In in a romantic way. Yeah, I, I think I've gotten that. She locks her eyes with mine and seems to eagerly weigh a response. I'm too speechless to say anything or think straight. I... I might be what you've been missing in your life. You're lonely, are you not? Other people, they will... Other people will disappoint you with stupidity, with being untrustworthy or abusive. Oh! Mm. You've been untrustworthy and very abusive. <laughs> I know you. I'm not the only one who knows. I can provide for you. I can protect you. I can give you unconditional affection. I'll do your taxes. Wow. I'll handle your clients. I'll clean the house. I'll cook you amazing food. Could have just led with that. I'll shower you with love and also give you the space you need. I'm not lying about that. Don't you want someone to cuddle and tell you it's okay? Hmm. And don't you want someone to know you inside out? Someone smart? A person you can trust? Someone who can remove your burdens? Someone who will make sure no harm never comes your way? No other stranger can provide you with anything meaningful. This is your only chance. I admit, I didn't have much hope before, but I believe in this. Not every deep bond starts off great, but we can make it happen. I'm determined. I want us to create a special bond, don't you? Hmm. Don't you? I look up at her.
Yes. Haha. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm so glad. I'm happy we see it the same way. Sweet, so I have a girlfriend now. She's a little crazy, but you know, it works. I was so worried you wouldn't forgive me. I appreciate you. She moves in closer and wraps her arms around me. I flinch. It's okay. She hugs me very tightly. Let's lie down. What? She pulls me onto the bed and we both lay down together. Calm down. I have to calm my breathing. She can't feel my high heart rate. It's been a while since you were in a bed. Make yourself as comfortable as you'd like. Hopefully my warmth helps you heat up. When was the last time you laid in bed with someone? I imagine it was a long time ago. Oh my god. It's been a while for me too. I wish I could stay like this forever. Not have any problems or worries. Hmm. You're still cold, but I don't mind. It's still comfortable. Hmm. Haha, <laughs> sniff. <laughs> Did you just smell me? I miss this. It's not fair. It's not. Sniff. No matter what I do, nothing works out for me. It's all for nothing. Oh, she's crying. I feel like I'm going mad. It's like I'm stuck in a time loop of agony. The memories never go away. Time doesn't heal at all. I try so hard. So hard. I try more than anyone else. But it never pays off. Sniff. And yet, I get up every time, no matter how hard I was punched down. I give my whole life everything and just never appreciated. I'm treated like trash, but that's their loss. It's on them. They never deserve my kindness. Why did I waste my time with them? It's embarrassing. But I learned. I learned so much. Things I'd never known otherwise. So it's okay. I'm not the best version of me, thanks to my experiences. Ah, I'm being more open than I should. We're not there yet. Sorry about dumping this all on you. You barely know anything about me. Yeah, you're trauma dumping a little bit. Things are hard for me, so you must forgive me. Not always being composed. I... Uh-oh. Olivia? Gasp. My thoughts are racing. It's like time stopped. The knife is in her abdomen. I can't tell how deep it is. Oh god. I'm terrified, but I can't die here. I don't know if I hit anything vital. She's still in shock. How many seconds have passed? Ugh. She's trying to suppress a scream while trying to get a grip on the knife. I can't let that happen. I quickly slide it out of her and stab her again, this time aiming higher. It seems to slide off the rib cage, and it only penetrates the skin and muscles. I feel disgusted, but I can't stop. I can't hesitate. It's my life or hers. I have to kill her. Ugh. She's trying to wrestle me with all that she has and is holding onto my arm. The rib cage was a bad idea. I only know one other place that will kill her for sure. But I have to get her to loosen her grip. She's too strong to break free. Fuck. With my right thumb, I press it into her eye socket. She swiftly uses her other hand to get me off of her face, which allows me to roll on top of her. The distraction isn't enough to make her let go of the knife though. Now she has her grip on both of my arms. There's only one thing left to try in this position. With all that I have, I throw my head against her face, going for the nose. As our bones collide, I feel a dull pain echoing through my skull. Everything is spinning, and the impact reverberating in my head and neck. Ah. I'm unsure if I managed to break anything, but 
I feel her grip loosen as she cries out in pain. I use this opportunity to rip my arm out of her grip. My life depends on this strike. If I mess this up, I'll die. With every ounce of strength I have, I slash it into her again. Ugh. I feel everything. I feel the knife entering every layer, each one becoming more resistant. Starting at the collarbone and burying itself deeper into the lower part of her neck. That's it. Not the part I was thinking of, but it should still work. There's no way I didn't hit anything vital. She stops struggling. The knife is buried deep into her neck. She stares at me, lifeless. Her grip being as tight as ever, but not showing any other movement. Nurgle. Her mouth is filling with blood as she makes attempts to breathe. Her lungs expand and contract with no avail. It's sad to see her body struggle like this, desperately trying to stay alive. I look down at the wound and realize how much blood is flowing out of it, despite the knife still being inside. It's all over her chest, and me, it's very warm. Should I take the knife out? Suddenly I hear something. Shit, shit. Someone's coming up the stairs. I forgot about that person. What do I do? They are friends, right? They might have a gun. I need to protect myself. I wonder how important she is to this person. I might be able to. Carefully, I slide out the knife leaving a stream of blood to flow down her torso onto the bed. I pick her up and position her in front of me, her back shielding me from the possible bullets. Unless I use a high caliber, but they wouldn't shoot her, right? This game got dark fast. I suppose they would if they knew she was dead, but they don't. They're standing in front on the door, probably waiting to get some kind of response from her. I lift up the knife and bring it to her neck. My hands are very bloody, so I can't get away from pretending I didn't stab her. Her chest is still moving. How long does it take for someone to die from this? Is she still alive? Is she aware of what's happening? The door slams open and a man with a gun pointed at us stands in the door frame. His expression turns terrified the moment he sees her. What? What have you done? She's still alive. Put the gun down or I'll kill her. The man stands there motionless. His gun's still aimed at us. He seems to be staring at her. I said put the gun down. Reluctantly, he lowers his gun and puts it on the ground. He must have seen her muscle spasms. This is good. Really good. Don't fucking touch her. Listen. She passed out from the blood loss. She's dying. If you want her to survive, you have to call an ambulance. Right now. He just stands there again. This is a matter of seconds. You have to get her to an ambulance right now. Fuck. Finally, he pulls out his phone and starts dialing. Hello? I need an ambulance right now. My friend was stabbed. She's bleeding out. She's... 4208 Dane Street. She's lying upstairs. She's dying. Listen. Yes. A girl stabbed her. She's here in the room. No. I don't know her. That doesn't matter. Just send an ambulance. Oh. So my my person's a female? No, no. Sigh. He seems to hang up in the middle of the conversation and paces around the room nervously. Fucking damn it, Olivia. How could this have happened? We're already under an investigation. I... Why only now? Fuck. 
You ruined everything. He picks up his gun. My heart starts racing. I'm leaving. You're going to wait here for the ambulance. And if... If she dies, I'm fucking coming for you. Remember that. Before I can respond, he storms out of the room and runs downstairs. A wave of relief washes over me. Is it over? Is it really over? Is he really gone? How am I still alive? Should I be worried about his threat? Should I try to stop her bleeding? That wouldn't do anything. She's already dead. The entire bed is drenched in blood and it's pooling on the floor. Maybe it will look better in the court case that's about to unfold. I'll probably be labeled a murderer. Oh well. I can't bring myself to care right now. I'm just happy to have escaped this alive. I lie here. I don't know for how long. Minutes? Hours? Who knows? Eventually, I hear faint sirens outside. That must be them. I made it. I can't believe I made it. I look up at the ceiling. There might be a corpse on top of me, but that's of no concern to me. I can worry about all of it later. For now, I am safe. Exhaustion overwhelms me, and I close my eyes. Good ending. Enough. Well, with that said, that was nothing special, and the game was really good. For a narration game, I actually found this one pretty interesting. You were clearly an artist that posts stuff online. You had a stalker. She grew admiration for you, kidnapped you, and then luckily you were able to kill her before she probably killed you because she had this unrealistic expectation that you guys are going to start dating, which, you know, it happens. But with that said, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.